Well, th- Netflix keeps letting them do this because they racking in the money and we keep watching. So let's just shut up and get into it. The cast this season, I'm just going to read through it really quickly and then we'll get into the first six episodes. So the first six episodes dropped um, as of now when you're seeing it, the next three episodes have dropped. So we're up to episode nine now. All right. So the women, Brittany, Alejandra, Amber, Desire. Oh, that's her name. A.D. Her name was Amber Desire, but A.D. Mackenzie, Amy C., Sarah Ann, Danette, Suni, Laura, Jessica, Danielle, Chelsea, Amy, Amber, Ashley. Those are the women. And then for the men, we have Kenneth, Matthew, Austin, Jamal, Jimmy, Vince, Clay, Nolan, Trevor, Drake, Ariel? Is that a man? I don't know. We didn't even see him. No camera time. Jeremy, Dion, Ben, and Johnny. So the first episode, of course, starts with the the Lachey's coming into both the men's and women's quarters. And Is he still wearing platform shoes? Probably. <laughs> did they look like they were the same height? Yeah, they did. Oh, he's still doing it. That's a nasty little man. You, right? You're nasty. You're sick. Yeah, Nick Lachey apparently wears platform shoes um, when he's filming Love is Blind because he's shorter than Vanessa. You're a nasty man, Nicholas. You just embrace your height and be a short king. Like... We're definitely going to judge you. I was going to say we're not going to judge you, but we're going to judge you. Everybody hates short men. Continuing. so <laughs> Especially when you're such an agent of chaos. Right? Like, he'd be like, and of course, I'm Nick Lachey. What do you mean, of course? Who are you? Who are you? I, I missed his uh, his reality show he had with Jessica Simmons, <laughs> uh, Simpson. Chick- yeah, when I... Chicken of t- it's tuna. <coughs> Chicken of the sea is tuna. I was gonna say that's the only thing I can think about when I think of that show is her thinking that Chicken of the Sea was chicken in a can. Like, girl. Okay, so episode one, um, we're gonna go by uh, episode, and then we're just gonna really quickly talk about what we cared about in each episode. I'm gonna skip over a lot of things because a lot of things happened, and I don't care about a lot of these people. So the first thing that stuck out to me the most in episode one was Matthew. My man. Rhetoric loves Matthew for some reason, but that's because they're both psychopaths. So, yo, he came in with a plan. He executed. So Matthew (laughs) is uh, shown with a list of questions that he pre prepared that he's asking women when women ask him the question back. He's turned off. He's like, oh, I know that you were gonna ask me questions too i thought i was just gonna be asking you questions and then he's also shown just like getting up and walking out while women are talking if he doesn't like their answers keeping it a being we we not on your time we on mine ma'am immediately i'm like does matthew know how to talk to other humans oh but does he because how did you not know that probably these women would be asking you and and you that's a regular human conversation thing and then tell me what your opinion is about the same thing you just asked me. You know, I tell think me about yourself in this matter. I be, I'm be, I think that was a little bit of editing. I think there was some editing to do with that. That wasn't all making him look like fucking Dexter. Like they really so, at the beginning, they had that man looking like a straight. He honestly, was trying to put somebody in the fridge. Matthew was literally looking like a psychopath. He did come out in the Love is Blind comments on Instagram and said that he did not walk out while any woman was talking. And that was all editing. He said that they're making him, they're trying to make him look like a terrible guy, and he didn't actually do that. Like, he said he didn't get up and walk out on anybody. Yeah, I, like I said, it looked like it was editing the way they did that. Mm-hmm. But then the women were, there was, there were some women that were like, hello? There was that one. Yeah. But that could have been just him being quiet for a second and not responding. And Because then, he's mad awkward. Yeah. So, like, yeah. like I said, anything you could, with editing, you can make anything look like you want. Yeah. Any kind of conversation. You can put people's words in front of them that they didn't say in out of order. So I could tell with him it was a lot of editing, but I like the kind of what they was trying to do with it. Like I, he I like might be a dick, he might not, but he definitely doesn't know how to interact with people because he he definitely was like, Well, I didn't think you were gonna ask me back that question. What do you mean? Well, I mean, that nigga did look <laughs> they, they played my man to make him look real sinister at the end, but we'll we'll get there. We will get there. So then um 
Matthew and AD make a connection after we're shown that he's just being a menace in these pods. So it's like a little surprising. And she's black. And I'm like, does he know she's black? (laughs) The whole time, throughout the thread of them interacting in the pods, I'm like, does he know she's black? (laughs) Because he's from the sticks. Like, he's from real country town. White. Midwest man. White man. (laughs) So, um... Then AD and Clay make a make a connection. Clay is a black man. He's like a very like smooth type player. Like he's a real he's, real chingy type. He's a prototype that we all know as a black man, you know? So, um Oh, let's go back to to Matthew really quickly. <laughs> because he seems like he hates every woman but his woman. Like after he makes the connection with AD, I'm like Okay, I like this. He seems like he's going to be, like, super loyal because he hates everyone but her. But mm, we'll get there when we get there. Sinister. Child. It was not. I was wrong. I was wrong. So then um, Clay and AD make a connection. Clay admits to, like, having a big ego, being, like, this, like, machismo type guy. Like, he admits to being that. He admits to relying on his looks a lot. And he also says that he's, like, worried about how he will be able to make a connection in the pods because they don't know he's fine. He definitely looked like him. he definitely looked like if Chingy and Tupac were, like, one person. Mm-hmm. But he, taller. He, yeah. Well, let, let their heights kind of balance each other, you know, give each other. But that's what he looks like a little bit. He, yeah. on, he was on. He, he was, does. You're right. And when he, when, he, when he found out about Matt, he was tight. So we'll get there when we get there. Same. That's not this episode. My like, bad. slow down. So um, that's the first love triangle is Clay, Matthew, and AD. But uh, only AD knows at this point <laughs> that, that they're in a love triangle. The next love square, this is a mess. So this is Trevor and Chelsea, Chelsea and Jimmy, Jimmy and Jessica, right? So, um, they all make connections within the the first episode. Jessica, um, eventually, in the in the beginning, she says that she's not gonna tell every uh, the the men that she immediately she has a child. She eventually tells Jimmy that she has a child, and then he's like, oh, like uh, he doesn't take it too too well, but he doesn't let her know that it's like a deal breaker for him, which I feel like, let me know what you think about this. And let me know what you guys think about this too, because I feel like Jessica should have, I don't think that was a good um, plan to have. You should within the first dates, let these men know that you have a child because he was like afraid to then tell you that it was a deal breaker at like a- after the fact you need to like I think you should lead with that because Jimmy wasted your time for a long for mad long before you told him that you had a child if you told him that you had a child he probably would have not talked to you and you probably would have been freed up to make genuine connections and it would have probably ended different for you I think she just had an authentic fear of tell they can't see her because I- if-, if we're being honest probably one of the most attractive women she is on the, the most side. attractive like it, it made sense a, why she and, had a kid her and ad are the most attractive women on this season definitely i think but yeah she she can't rely on her looks at all so so I, there's a there's a lot of guys who would when she told him she would have a kid in a normal dating scene would probably let it ride because of her overall attractiveness but in this situation i can understand why you don't throw that out off jump because that is going to throw the person off but Anytime you re- re- reveal that information, it's going to throw the person off. Yeah. No matter she what. She does say that her daughter is 10 years old. It's not like she has, like, a baby. And then she says that her and her um, her baby daddy have an amazing co-parenting relationship. He's in her life. They're fine. They're not together anymore. They haven't been together. They weren't together after, like, a, her being, like, a year old. So it's been a very long time, and they're on good terms now. Yeah, I mean, again, it's still going to be – a difficult uh, situation. Yeah. It's a hard sell, but especially over just the, 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 the talking It's definitely gonna be hard. 
Let us know what you guys think, though, because I, I do think that she should have revealed that a little bit sooner than she did reveal it. Maybe not in the first date, but maybe in the second date. Like, I don't I don't know. But um, she didn't want the scarlet letter, babe. She didn't want the scarlet letter. Yeah. Immediately after that, Chelsea tells Jimmy that she's been uh, married before. She was married for five years. She was married very young and then they grew apart and got divorced. Um, he, she seems to not take his reaction well, but his reaction is like, damn, like I'm being piled on. Like y'all, this is a, this a lot um, coming from me from a bunch of different ways, but he does tell her like, out of all the news that I got, this is the lightest news. So I'm not even like, it's not even that big of a deal. So, (laughs) well, she didn't take it like that, but she didn't. She starts crying like boo hooing, like. All the way through the whole girl quarters. Yeah. These people are constantly drunk and underfed. So, like, context and understanding and communication, I don't think is the best. So, I don't know if love is blind as a concept is the the best thing. And I think there Feed might be. these people. I think there might be, like, maybe some muffling through the, the speakers, too, for hearing each other. Because, clearly, the communication just don't be coming clear through sometimes. I think It's a little just- choppy. We'll get there, but I think that's just Chelsea. Um, <laughs> so um, events during the first episode, also Clay, uh, after they make a connection, Clay and AD, he's like, "I need to know what you look like." I like I have show a me certain, that pussy. <laughs> I have a certain standard. I need to know that you have like full lips, a little waist, and a fat ass. And then AD is like, "No." <laughs> Absolutely not. Like, I could tell you that I have thick thighs, a fat ass, and full lips and all that, like, exactly what you're looking for. But, like, this is not what we came here for. We're supposed to fall in love sight unseen. and So that's why I was confused. Is that not a rule? Is that not a rule where you can't tell the person what you look like on a – like, I feel like that's a rule. So a lot of people – Past um, Love is Blind members have come out and said that, like, eventually over time, it's not, like, unlike people to, like, give, like, little hints about what they look like. But in general, like, people don't straight up, like, ask if you're an attractive person. Like, <laughs> well, everybody's going to say, yeah, you can't just ask that. That's that's wild. Everybody's going to say, yeah. Yeah. So um, Matthew. After that, Matthew asks AD about her father. Can I hold on? Can we go back to Clay real quick? Yeah, yeah AD. Uh, do you think she's what he was looking for? I think she is half of what she was looking for. I think. I think. I think. Yeah. I think if we were like out of ten, she's probably like six or five or six of what he was looking for. I would. I would. I would. Ah, uh, yeah. I would say like six, seven. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll get there too. <laughs> so um, next, Matthew asks AD about her father and like if he would have how he would like to go about asking for her hand in marriage. She says that her father is dead. Instead of consoling her about that, he's like, "Well, that's a roadblock. I'm not gonna have to deal with." Excuse me? I think he said, I think that was just taken out of context. Excuse me? But she did say that, like, she, like, even if he was alive, like, that's not something that you would have to do because I'm not close to my father at all. Like, Yeah, she, she laughed got, it off. It wasn't she like she was daddy upset. daddy issues. So she was like, yeah, fuck that nigga. <laughs> Honestly, like, See how she was easy like, it is yeah. for them to hate us? Easy. We don't know what her um, deal is with her dad, so stop being such a man. I was writing for other men. You Immediately me, writing for other men. You want you, you want me to grab my 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 bundle of sticks and break my hand? Don't do that, cause I'm not a dumb woman. <laughs> 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 I'm not dumb. Okay, so um, after Matthew says that, Ad goes back into the women's quarters and hears Amber. Apparently, Matthew has made another connection with another human woman. Whoa. I was shocked. I was like, another woman can stand Matthew? I could tell the game was 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 laying on thick with him. Like, what? 
So um, this woman says, Amber says that like Matthew like asked him, her to leave with him and everything. So AD um, keeps what Matthew told her to herself and um, speaks to Matthew first about it. So uh, <laughs> that's how the first uh, episode ends. That that would have been my mood too, though. If I was mad, like, because he even said he's not trying to be no celebrity out of this. He trying to get his woman to go home. He did say that. He was like, "I'm not here t- for camera time." So I, I I feel him like that would have been my hey baby. Let's go home. I would have did that. I'd have told like five women women in the same night. Let's just leave right now together. We 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 meant to be with each other. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we can start our own show. That's crazy. That would be a terrible way to go about it because the women in the their quarters are all gonna talk about it together, and then you're gonna be man. Oh my you're goodness! You're gonna be in outs with all of the women. I need you to do this one thing for me, baby. I need to know that you for real for me. I need you to keep a secret, but I want no. you. I'm gonna I tell you I'm gonna keep you. a secret, but I'm not gonna keep a secret. And then that's how I know you're not the one. And then I'm gonna tell you what I would never say that to her. Just like how he did. This nigga just lied all about you, everything. All you need to do is one of them to be like, this nigga said this, and then all of them are going to realize, and no, then that's no, it. No, it's not. Cause all you all you need is one of them to make them other ones think they all just some awesome bullshit. That's all it takes is one. That's all they need. In this specific situation, if a woman is in the woman's quarters and she's yelling, excited to her friends, talking about the same thing that you said to four other women... That's not going to go well with you, and you're delusional if you think that's going to go well. It worked for me Because Matt. we've seen it. It didn't. We don't know. We don't know. Matt is in the comments furiously typing away mad as hell right now. I thought he went right. with Shotty dog. I thought he found Shotty. We don't know that. Matt found Shotty dog. Matt was like, planting. Shotty was not happy with. Matt was planting the seeds, yo. So, um, talk about it. Episode two. Uh, there's another love triangle. I don't care about these people. There's a love triangle between Jeremy, Sarah, and Laura. Moving on. AD confronts Matthew. So she, <laughs> she, um, she's like, uh, you told Amber that you wanted to leave with her, and you basically told her verbatim what you told me. And that makes it less special to me because I went there on cloud nine and then I immediately got knocked off because I heard her talking about you telling her that you wanted to leave with her. He goes, I didn't tell her exactly Mm -hmm. what I told you. Talk about it. Semantics. Matthew is very much like a master manipulator, I think. So he was like, I I don't like that framing. He was like, I didn't tell her exactly what I said about you. I said this specific thing to you that was different than what I said to her, which is um about his mom. Huh? He said he told he didn't tell her about he didn't tell his mom about her. Yes. Like like she would love you and this and that. It was like one specific thing. But all of the other things that they eventually discuss, he told them both. So um, and then he also goes while he's talking to her and he's like. I'd choose you right now today and ask you to leave with me, but I'm not choosing today. So stick with me. I'm going to choose tomorrow. That nigga had motion. That nigga had motion. Because if, if, if you are correct and you didn't tell me the same things that you told her and you feel stronger for me, why do you need more time to pick? Because if I told you I wanted to leave with you today, then you would be like, oh, give me one more day. That's not giving me... I'm your bitch energy, period. Well, That's giving me you You need more time to mull over your other option, which it's fine for you to have another option 100%. No, I need to tell other shorty. don't lie about it. No, I need other shorty to know that I'm about to leave and she got an option to leave too. <laughs> got to let them know. Okay. We so leaving tonight. After, um, after that conversation, AD and Clay talk again. So um, Clay, like, apologizes for, hold on, did we? Yeah. Well, we didn't go into the 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 deep into their, why he's apologizing to her. Because remember, he went off on her when she told no, me. No, no, no. So we didn't get to this yet. Clay apologizes this time in the beginning of their conversation for asking her what she looks like. And then they get past that. 
So then after they get past that, AD tells Clay that she has made another connection and he's not the only person that she's talking to. And the other connection that she has made is with Matthew. Clay goes off after he already apologizes to her about the whole what like do you have a fat ass like after he apologizes about that she's like okay we got past that but yes i have another person and he's like pacing around but he knew who it was though that's why she she tells him yeah that's what i'm saying but he knew who bro was yeah so clay obviously and he says this he doesn't feel like matthew is somebody that he should be in competition with he's like this is a man that is subpar like, there's other people that in, when he's in the men's quarters, he's talking about it to some guy. I don't even remember which guy he's talking to. But he's like, if it was you, then I'd be okay with it. But Matthew. That was kind of wild, though. Like, yeah. Like, yo, if she was into you, like, I could understand. But this guy? Yeah, that was a little weird. Like, you wanted to spit on your hand and jack him, Clay. Relax. <laughs> but Matthew, like, in the men's quarters, they show him, like, not even talking to anybody. Like, he's very much like an anti-social kind of guy. Matthew, you should not have been on this show. You should have went on, like, Married at First Sight, where, like, they they give you a survey of, like, who you are, and they ask you questions, and then they mask you to a, speci- to a specific person, and then you only have to deal with that person. <laughs> It's the social thing has is not for you. Like you're not a social person, and that's okay. But this show, you should not have been on the show. I, I don't really watch a lot of these shows, but when I do watch them, I notice that a lot of people hold the book. He's the only one I ever seen that was writing in it, like really writing in it. Like his pages was full. He's a very analytical person. Yeah, like he was definitely using that book. I can remember he he forgot it, and which is. They Which is why t- I think he's manipulative. The man is very calculated. I mean, that's not, I don't feel like. And he's not, he's not dumb. I don't like that being pictured as calculated just because I'm predicting. It's not predicting. It's just like it is. going out of your way to lie about something that you don't have to lie about. Because in this specific situation, like we're like speed dating, we're dating multiple people. You don't have to lie to anybody and like say that you're not you're making a connection. You could have just been like, I have a connection with somebody else. And I did talk about marriage with her, too, because I I can honestly see that with the both of you. And I'm having trouble between picking the two of you, which is what Jimmy did. That ain't how you do it, bro. Like, you ain't no man, so you don't get it. But Jimmy ended up, like, engaged with somebody and Matthew didn't. So Because yeah, Matthew left. Yeah, but Matthew wouldn't have ended up engaged you anyways. Because, because Matthew, okay, so Matthew... AD, let's get let's get to that. So AD and Amber finally talk. They like exchange notes. They finally have their like girly talk. And Matthew was definitely telling Amber the same things that he was telling. He was getting his shit off. Yeah. Like when they finally exchange notes, he's like, yeah, she asked. He asked about my father. He told me he wanted to leave with me. Like saying he did the whole uh, I want to ask for his hand and you yeah, know, hand boom, and boom, boom, boom. Like I rock notes. with it. It's very crazy. And that's how episode. Oh, what? Well, so episode two ends with Amber leaving. She's like, I'm done with this. I'm leaving. So um, let's move on to episode three. Johnny and um, Amy meet. Uh, they got engaged. So this is a couple moving on. <laughs> There's lots of people that I really, like, don't care too, too much about. Clay is crying in the men's quarters over, like, AD in the entire situation because he feels like he shouldn't be in competition with Matthew. He um, goes into the pods, um, talks to AD, and then he, like, loosely apologizes for his behavior the day before when he was, like, pacing around yelling and upset about being in competition with another man he's like this is what we're here for so like i overreacted i think that he kind of just realized how weird he was sounding yo yeah you was sounding like a loose cigarette my guy yeah and then he opens up he's like i cried this morning and then ad being the and she calls herself this being the fix a hoe that she she is she's like so touched about the fact that like he cried over her this morning so like they back locked in after that when he like barely apologizes to her can i can i just say something uh, what i had an issue with there this kind of little love triangle Mm -hmm. because what it was was she was madly in love with this white man and when he pulled the wool from over her eyes then she went back to the black man 
Yeah. I didn't like it. Made me feel sick to my stomach. Mm-hmm. She, I think, but she was leaning more towards Matthew because Clay had asked her what he looked, what she looked like. Nah, she had already experienced that kind of Clay energy before. She knew what it was. That was like her old thing. She was trying, but she knew that she wanted to try something different. She she was leaning towards Matthew because he felt like a newer energy. Like she because she knew he was a white was, boy. She knew that Clay was like the like stereotypical let's be honest she wanted to be a divester oh my god she Good wanted Lord. to switch teams but um before everything blew up clay and no ad and matthew did have a, a talk about like race and everything and um he said that he didn't care about like i mean what, of course, what, the, what like is he supposed to say blah 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 but you can't be like oh if you're black then get the fuck out could you just imagine nigger bitch could you just <laughs> Could you just imagine he was like, ask me the question, like, I just want you to know I'm I'm black. Just, just, just pretend you're AD and I'm Matthew. I just want you to know that I'm an, a strong African-American woman. You're a what? I'm I'm black. You're a nigger? What? <laughs> like, that's how you want him to act? <laughs> you want him to act like that? <laughs> On fucking with cameras everywhere? <laughs> you're right. He couldn't. Uh, he couldn't you're a pickaninny coon? Else. So, speaking of. Of that perfect segue into Britney and Kenneth. Oh, yeah. Hold on. You get the horns out for Kenneth. My boy got him a tall glass of milk. Okay, but. <laughs> okay, so Britney and Kenneth, they are like Jesus freaks. They bond over the fact that they both love God, which is basic as fuck. That's hate. It's basic. Can we just say though that Kenneth? So many people Ken, love God. That's the what else? Can we just note that Kenneth wasn't in the first two episodes except one time talking to Clay, <laughs> <laughs> and like he was just saying it we so they passing. No, I, I literally I thought that Kenneth was making no connections and we would never see him outside of the pod. When I saw Kenneth, the first thing I said was, "Oh, we ain't seeing this nigga's story at all." Never. <laughs> I was like, "We are never seeing this man speak." In confessional, but apparently, so Kenneth and Brittany uh, made a connection. Kenneth is obviously a black man. Brittany is a white woman. Um, she talks about how she wants a very traditional marriage. She um, doesn't want to make any decisions. She wants talk about it. She wants you to call her dad, and she wants y'all to talk about. She's giving trad wife very much. And, trad wife. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had that in my notes so I could say it because it's a hot button word. <laughs> but um. Uh, damn, I lost my train of thought. She's giving that. So I, I don't know. That's that's another one of those situations was like, does she know he's black? Does she know he's black? Do you know? This is a, 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 a no, nah, let me not. A nigga. <laughs> he did it for me. Do you know that this is a black man? She, I don't think she knows. So. Nah, um, she knew. She knew he had the voice. He sounded like fucking ba- uh, Barry White. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah, he does. So um, we're going to speed past. They make a connection, blah, 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 traditional Christian. He proposes. She says yes. Next, um, Jess tells Jimmy that he is her number one. And she's like, it's okay if you're talking to other people. I want you to fully robustly explore those connections and if i'm the one that you end up with at the end then that'll make me feel better about that because like you explored and you know thoroughly that i'm the person that you want which is like so mature yes girl i couldn't do it choose me period if there's anybody else don't even consider me i'm out of i'm out of the running if it's another bitch in the running i'm not running period but Jessica is, is is entirely more mature than me. Was Jessica the one with the with the nigga who looked like Aaron Paul? I said Jessica like, is the girl with the baby. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, so she tells the the man that that's her number one. Um, and he's like, okay, <laughs> not really. Like he's like, yeah, he's love like that. He's like, I'm your number one, but you come with two. Yeah, basically. So Trevor um tells Chelsea. That he loves her. We love Trevor. He's such a sweetie pie. He is. Um, justice for Trevor. 
uh, she goes back to the woman's quarters and like starts crying her eyes out because like, oh my God, Trevor loves me, but I like Jimmy. And it's so hard to be loved so much by two men. And then um, uh, this is just this is Chelsea. So then Jessica is there just like sitting there like this. This kind of sucks <laughs> because like choose, choose, choose the man that, that that's in love with you because the other one I, I like. So, <laughs> so it would it would genuinely be easier that way. I wish that's how it worked out. And technically she wanted the inferior of the two men yes <laughs> like because significantly trevor is like stereotypically if you like white men um way better looking than jimmy trevor could do push-ups with the girl and her baby on on his back trevor could bench press jimmy and jimmy couldn't even like trevor was the guy who bullied jimmy in high school 1000 percent. but like fist Physically, he's the guy that bullied Jimmy in high school. But personality wise, that was his best friend in high school. Yeah, he he would definitely he's give a very him. sweet guy. He would like help the kids bully him, and then afterwards, like I'm sorry, bro, like help him clean them off. Yeah. So that's the end of episode three. Episode four, Jess gives Jimmy a letter that she wrote to her future husband, mad long ago. She gives that to him. Girl, you should have kept that for like wedding day you know like a, the gift that you give to your husband the day of your wedding type shit because then this is something that you wrote a long time she makes it seem like this is something that she wrote a long time ago you wasted that you wasted that on jimmy also did you know that he looks like a pinky toe i gave him more of a big thumb i wouldn't even give him the big thumb <laughs> <laughs> he's the pinky toe he definitely looked like he was in, he he can't be in the sun too long though he yeah the man is translucent. And then the girl, he, oh, man. Did we get to the part where he, where he made the pick? No. So um, Jimmy, after that, is a little indirect bitch. And Jess is, like, fed up with his shit. So she's like, make a decision. I'm done with this. Immediately after that, he goes and tells Chelsea that he loves her. After uh, Trevor did it, like, the day before. So um, that's great. After that, Laura, uh, they go back into the women's pods. Um, Chelsea is talking to Laura about how Jimmy just told her that he loves her. Laura, real bitch energy, goes straight to Jessica and was like, leave right now. <laughs> leave right now before you look stupid because that is not your man. He just told another girl that he loves her. That's not your man, which love that. That's the only thing. But so she could have went to Trevor. That's it's too late for that now. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's only ten days. So, um, that's the only thing that Laura really does that uh, up to episode six so far that I like. Cause I don't, I'm not a huge fan of Laura. We'll get into that more later. Um, Clay and Ad they got engaged. They meet. <laughs> she turned around. Ow, ow! Look at this body, body, body. Ow, ow! Like, <laughs> and he's like, yes, yes. But then he's not really like. He's not I, sold on it. She's not. Okay, let's be honest. She has a nice body, but she would be in, in many cases what we would call a butterface. Okay, so now, now you're doing the thing again. I, I don't like when you talk about women's physical features on camera, even when I agree with you. But that's what people would label her, her as. She, yes, yes. So I mean, like the body is the selling point for AD physically because hey, hey, stereotypically she, she's not an ugly girl. She's not. But she's not like the prettiest girl either. I mean, like I said, it, it's it's very clear to him to me. That the type of women that he would go for and approach for don't fall into an average looking woman. And she is slightly, like slightly, slightly above average. Yeah, she is she is a little bit above average. She is. So yeah. she's so I can see where him when you're looking at that and like that's not generally his shooting point. So now he feels like, okay, I'm I'm stepping down now. Granted, you could turn the girl around and she looks amazing from you looking at her from behind, but I mean it may not be the same way when he's looking at her in her face. I'm just saying what I'm just saying what the not, nigga not, face not, look not, like. Yeah, that's that's what I got too. 
honestly, you can tell when a man is like fully infatuated with a woman, like engulfed in her beauty, and that's not what Clay was giving me when he when he saw AD. He loved her body though. He was like, yes, slamming. There is it's undeniable that like she works hard in the gym and she is it. The body is body and girl. Like, I'm very jealous as far as that. Like, I wish I had that body. All right. So um after they meet, Jimmy and Jess talk one more time where um Jimmy is like beating around the bush. He's so indirect. Like he is afraid of being the bad guy. He doesn't want to hurt people's feelings. So he's like beating around the bush for mad long. And she's like, just cut the shit and be direct with me. Like, just let me know what you're, what you're feeling. So he lets her know that he's going with Chelsea. And then she's like, okay, um, I don't like how you didn't let me know literally yesterday that you were going with Chelsea because you knew. And we all knew that he knew because right after they talked, he went and told Chelsea that he loved her. So he knew. Um, <laughs> and then she goes, and when you realize what you passed up on, you're going to choke. You're going to need an EpiPen to open up your airways because of how bad you're going to be choking. Because she's like, I know I look better than her. I mean, but she's going to feel the same way about her two choices too. So that yeah. was the funny part where it's like, yeah, everything you said about – him but her, she applies. Wasn't, she wasn't talking to Trevor like that. But I'm saying Trevor was into her, and no, she chose the. No, Trevor was not into her. Oh, he was into Chelsea. Yes. Oh, shit. So, oh shit, Trevor, you psyched out. Yeah, Ch- Jessica was. So, so, so the j- only connection that Jessica had was with Jimmy. Oh, okay. I thought she and I for some reason I was confused. I thought no, we she wish- had two. We wish that that um Jessica and Trevor they would have been a, a thing. They would have been they would have won. They were the they would have been the most attractive couple. Yeah, they would have stayed on like whatever what? people would have wanted to see them. One hundred percent. That flick would have went up at OnlyFans. Justice fans. for Trevor. That could have been a twenty five dollar ninety nine OnlyFans. All righty, so episode five is next. We see um, Chelsea and Jimmy get engaged. Trevor is sad about it, but he's, like, super mature about it. Um, Jeremy and Sarah break up. He proposes to Laura, another group of people that we don't care about. Jimmy <laughs> proposes to Chelsea, and uh, um, so they finally meet, and then... <laughs> see, the, so, w- the... Let me, let me, let me... Because you didn't let, say something sh- she said in the past. Sh- sh- let me do this right now. So... In the pods, Chelsea gave Jimmy a hint about what she looked like. She said, other people, let me, let me, like, I want to let y'all know. She said, other people tell me I look like this celebrity, but I don't see it. I don't see it. That's what she said. And then she's like, um, blue eyes, dark hair. And he's like, Megan Fox? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, you look like Megan Fox? And I do think that was a defining factor in why Jimmy ended up choosing Chelsea over Jessica. And the crazy thing is other girl looks way closer. (laughs) Prototype wise, she does look she does fit in that box more. But Chelsea, she looks like Megan Fox right now. Chelsea in certain angles like. I could see it. I don't know. You can't see it. I could see it. Man, she looked like Amy Schumer. (laughs) She got a really sharp chin. Like, <laughs> like come on, let's let's keep it a bean, yo. Like she, she has a very sharp chin, but she does have those like piercing blue eyes. And I did see somebody post her from like the eyes up on TikTok, and people were guessing Megan Somebo- Fox. Somebody but did it say it was um, Jessica. Somebody did I mean, say if you put your Chelsea. thumb, if you put your thumb over her chin, and look at it, you could you could see Megan Fox. <laughs> she does give Megan Fox a little bit. They meet. Jimmy goes to the confessional. First of all, he accidentally says Jessica's name when he's talking about being engaged to Chelsea. And then he's like, straight up, she lied to me about looking like Megan Fox, but we can make it work. When a man is talking about what I look like, I never want we can make it work to be um, what (laughs) what he ends up like saying. So really quickly, the couplings... Right. Are um, because everyone is like has proposed at this point. Jimmy and Chelsea, Brittany and Kenneth, Jeremy and lawyer, Laura, Laura 
Clay and AD, Johnny and Amy. I don't think we talked about Johnny and Amy that much at all. We don't care about them too much, but they're super cute. Was that the one with the the beaning thing you said? That was the like um kind of like she's the Puerto Rican girl with the oh, like with, Irish white so, boy. Yeah, that's the Aaron Paul looking guy. Yeah. So They look um, happy. The end of episode five, the honeymoon start, and Jimmy is in there with Chelsea talking about like how hard it was, but bet- choosing between her and Chelsea, which is like not how you want to start your honeymoon, sir. That's not great. That, why would you start it like that? Like, could have been somebody else whole time. It, <laughs> my this boy, close to being somebody else. My boy is looking regret right in the eyeballs. Yeah, right now. yeah, he really is, and it's hard to watch because. You can tell that um, does Chelsea. He know, does he know what Jessica looks like? No. Oh, that's good. Yeah, he. Could, you could tell that Chelsea is like feeling it from him, but she's trying to like stick it out a like, little bit. I like, don't know. Like it's like one of those experiences for guys that are listening to the, the three guys that are gonna watch this video. <laughs> it's like <laughs> when you talk to the girl and she like show you just pictures of just the neck up. Mm-hmm. And she got a nice looking little. She all right, you know what I'm saying? And then you get there and she takes up two seats. You're like, oh shit. Like, this is Let's stop, not Let's when stop I, doing that. Coming out to a fat woman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's making me uncomfortable, even though I've never been fat and never will be. This nigga right here, yo. I thought you was my rider. Never will be. I am your rider. I don't want you to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to stop you before you get there. That's the difference. Okay, so episode six, AD and Clay talk... Um, they're like on the beach. They talk about if her body changes. Like she's she's talking about inevitably her body is changing because she wants to have children. And she's like, how do you feel about that? Because she knows. I feel like in her subconscious she knows that Clay is like the the thing that he likes the most is her body and not her face because it's probably a, an experience that she has on a regular basis. And Clay hasn't seen her mama yet, so you don't know what you're getting into. Oh, my God. So, Clay is like, I'm going to tell you to get in that gym, bitch. (laughs) Essentially, like, I'm paraphrasing, but that's essentially what he tells her. He's like, he's like, I'm going to tell you immediately to get in that gym and lose that baby fat. Fuck is you talk about? That's unacceptable for you to be fat. I'm pretty sure it was more in line of, hey, I'm going to be with you and we're going to I'm going to motivate you so that you can have that. That's after she's like taken aback. That's the second. Oh, that was the cleanup. That was the cleanup. But he was like, "I'm a, literally." He goes, "I'm gonna tell you to get in that gym and get to work." Motivation. Like that's what he said. It's motivation. Like what? And then so everyone meets <laughs> in this episode. All the couples that have coupled. Everyone is seeing each other. Everyone's seeing the people they could have potentially dated. I don't know who talked to who. Um. So the thing in this, there's two things in this episode that I want to talk about first. Jimmy and Chelsea are standing there. He looks over at AD. He's like, damn, she's stacked. Which she is. Bro, that ass is crazy. But then Chelsea is obviously, like, very uncomfortable with it. And she tries to make light of the situation. AD is right there. And she's like, yeah, she is. AD, let us know how you get your body like that. Like, Jimmy just just said you stacked. And... AD is like squats and Jesus girl just squats and Jesus like that's literally what she says and then you could like AD is like eh, a little bit about it so um Jimmy is like damn why did you like yell that out to her like that like you weren't supposed to do that now I'm more uncomfortable and then he goes to AD and has like what editing makes it seem like a 20 minute to half an hour conversation <laughs> with AD while Chelsea just gets increasingly uncomfortable and just like walks away. Yo, I, whoever does the editing, we're gonna look up the company's name so we can shout y'all the next time we talk about y'all. Y'all do a great job of of selling whatever little lie y'all trying to build. Y'all do a great job of selling that shit. Yeah. So that situation was extremely <coughs> awkward to watch. And then, so the next thing, um, Ad and Kenneth talk about. The fact that he is dating the first white woman he's ever dated in his life, Talk which about he it. said. Shout out to and the milkman. And she's like, 
like, it, do you think Britney is ready to raise black children? So they have this conversation about like the nuances of like interracial dating, and it's a very healthy rela- It's a very healthy conversation, and there have been interracial couplings on Love Is Blind before, but this uh, conversation of this this caliber has never been had before. So I like that they included this, and it wasn't like her hating or anything like that. It was just a healthy conversation, so I like it. So the next thing I want to talk about is this bean dip uh, scenario. So um, Jeremy is sitting there with Clay, and he's like, oh, uh, and Clay and AD, I think. And he's like, oh, uh, Laura told me to bean dip you. So I, th- I don't think Jeremy knows what bean dip means at this point when he tells Clay this. But bean dip, so AD is like, Bean dip is like a titty smack, like a like that, like a to 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 both the titties. And then Jeremy is like, yeah, she told me to do that to you. So then I'm like, this white woman told you to smack this black woman's titties and your the body is crazy. And I feel like she was like sexualizing and making a joke out of this black woman and her body. By telling her, this white man, to smack her titties? Like, that's what I took it as, honestly. So, Clay doesn't take it well. AD doesn't take it well. So, what was that? We talked about it on the show. What was the, the black woman that was paraded around, like, Europe and stuff? Uh, damn, I forget her name. That's what you felt like, though? Yes. That's what, it, that's what it was giving? That's what it was giving to me. So, I was like, you cannot make a mockery of this black woman's body and just make jokes about violating it. That's not okay. So then Laura comes over and she was like, oh, it was just a joke. It was just a joke and you're making a big deal out of nothing. Bitch, they're not making a big deal out of nothing. You felt comfortable enough to literally tell a man to violate another woman's body without her consent. And not just a man. That's what it was. Not just a man. A white man. A white man. Like, that's, it wasn't, it's not to be taken lightly, and I don't know how it's taken from here on out, but, like, I do feel like that needs to be taken more seriously, Laura, because that's fucking crazy, and I'm glad that Jeremy said that, and then um, Clay does not take that well. He's like, what do you mean you told another man to smack my fiance's titties? And then she's like, oh, calm down, calm down, calm down, you're taking it too seriously, and then walks away. And then she's talking to to ad about it and then she's like oh he needs to calm down and ad's like don't fucking tell my fiance to calm down he don't need to calm down about it because this is crazy and I like that she, she checked her because don't tell my nigga to calm down like i don't i did not like that situation and now laura is genuinely my least favorite person of this season because of this specific situation and there is so much nuance that she's trying to sweep under the rug and there's something wrong with you, bitch, for you to think that it's okay for you to tell another man to touch another woman's body jokingly. That's not a fucking joke. Ever. That's weird. You're a weird bitch. Done. Love is Blind episodes one through six. Done. The biggest thing we got from that, Laura is a weird ass bitch. Mm, talk about it. And that's that on that. And that's not, I, I don't. Like, I, I hold grudges, bitch. You're irredeemable in my eyes. Mm. That's irredeemable behavior. Ir- How did you think as a, as a grown-ass woman that that was okay? Ew. Ew. Shame. We'll definitely have more on this once uh, we review these next batch episodes. So we'll have next a, three are out. We know we, we did trash on the last uh, Love is Blind. Was that Love is Blind the one that we did review last time? Yeah. We did trash on that last one. Oh yeah, we only did the first couple episodes. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna do and then we did like a little clean up, touch up on the mm. <laughs> on another episode. We're gonna do better. Promise you, talk F and F T V here. Pinky promise. We're gonna do better. <laughs>